Hi everyone, welcome back to Art with Miss Linda. Today we're going to learn how to change the value of a color, changing the shade, the tone, by using tissue paper. A little bit of glue, a lot of water, paint brushes, and we're going to create something that is transparent, colorful. You're going to design it yourself and we are going to enjoy ourselves because it's very, very, very new way of learning color concepts. All right, color theory made fun. Sometimes it's repetitive when you're learning, you know, mix your, your colors together and you're gonna get a orange and get purple. Today we're gonna use tissue paper to take that up a notch. And it's completely different than what you think. I was surprised the first time I experimented with this many, many years ago. The first thing you need to do is to cut your pieces into nothing bigger than this. I'd say this rectangle. And if you've noticed, I use my clothespins to keep my colors. And I have lights and darks together on some, some separate. There is a multitude of colors that you can use. I found that this green bleeds. When it gets wet, the color moves out to the side and leaches out, which might upset you at first, but then you're gonna be like, wow, that looks really cool. There's white, which we need for certain areas, not a lot of it, and then the blues and greens. These are the colors that I'm gonna to use today in our project, but first I wanna talk about that color theory I promised. When you're using tissue paper, when you layer them, you're going to get a different effect depending on what color is underneath, what color is on top. When you have the red on the bottom and the blue on the top, you get a faint purple. But when you put the blue on the bottom and the red on the top, you're going to get that really nice violet tone. Same thing making oranges, yellow on the bottom, red on the top, you get a vibrant orange. You put the lighter color over the darker color on this one and it's going to kind of mask or hide the red a little bit, but you still get like a tangerine tone. I like that. Green, just like in paint, is hardest to do. I like the yellow with the blue on top. I think that makes a, a green tone that we're looking for. And again, you put the lighter over the dark and it's going to mask the color. There's another way. These have white over the top of them. And this is what I was talking about. See how it kind of blurs out on the side? I actually love the way it looks on a purple. And textured, you see the texture that you also create. This is just like, okay, let's just put them all down and see what happens. You get a variety of different tones and shades through this. The green seems to be my only problem. Now, what we are going to do with these is we're going to create a vase. Just because this is an orange vase, this is actually the vase that I was looking at. And you can see where the light is, that's why I inserted the yellows. Just because it's blue doesn't mean I need to make it blue, I made it orange. And I actually ripped the paper, and today I'm gonna give you a break because we're gonna use scissors and cut it. These are some examples that were drawn. It gives you more a sense of the shape. So I think we're gonna draw ours today too with a Sharpie marker or an, a permanent marker because once this gets wet, you don't want that black doing what that green tissue paper did. Now these are a mixture of colors and you can see there's a little green in there. Be bold, be a little experimental when you do it. There's three of them. These were also ripped. You're gonna see the difference between this abstract kind of looking artwork and something more structured. These are my favorites. I don't know why. Probably because it's green. You know, Miss Linda Hinder green. And I like the way I put that red in there. You want it to look three-dimensional. You want it to look transparent, which means see-through. Today, we're going to use a clear vase because some of us don't have colored glass vases. Some of us don't have vases. You could use just a regular clear glass and do the same thing. This is tall, narrow, but again, you can see where the light shines. I'm going to put it in front of me. And the first thing I needed to do was sketch. So I looked at it and I noticed that there's, you know, a, a wider bottom. I put that in first and I did the circle shaped like an eye. So we know that it's a cylinder. 
it goes up. And I did it very lightly. Now, before I start my project, after I've got my drawing, I'm gonna set this off to the side, and I have all the tools I need right here. We're gonna take glue. There's about this much water in there, about that much. And I'm gonna put the glue in, and realistically, let's open it all the way. Squirt this in. You need at least, I'd say a quarter glue. This is actually kind of art, art playing too. A quarter of amount of glue. I should have probably just opened the top and just let me stir this and see if it's enough. Any size brush that you have will work. Let's, oh yeah, this is looking good. If there's too much glue, it's not going to spread. And it mixes fairly easily. And since it's in a clear glass, I can kind of hold it up and look and see. When you lift it up and you see that, what does that tell you? Yes, mix it some more, Miss Linda, mix it up. Looks like milk. All right, let's push that off to the side. If it gets too thick, I can always spread it around. I'm gonna move this off to the side, get my scissors. I'm sure I have enough glue, so I'm putting that off to the side. Now these are the colors. I, I'm going to make this a very light blue vase. And I'm gonna throw a little green in there for interest. These are the colors I'm gonna be using. I did pre-cut these so that you didn't have to watch Miss Linda cut. There's one stuck under there. Foam tends to have a little static electricity. So let's see, do I have all my colors? No, I guess I wanted to cut this one in front of you and the white. So I'll set these off to the side, stack these up, move my vase. I could use a bigger workspace today. And just for the heck of it, I'm gonna take a few off. Clothespins are great for this type of thing. This will be where my shines are, where the reflection of the light is. So I'm gonna cut some thin pieces. We're gonna be layering. So it doesn't matter how small. So I think I'll put this with the green. I have my green here. And I'm gonna clip the rest of this because, uh-huh, we can use it for something later. And then we need some of this deep turquoise blue. I like this color, so I'm gonna take quite a few. Now this is a rounded object. If I cut in geometric lines, it's going to be hard to adhere or put it on. So I'm gonna go with some rounded lines. I think later on I'm gonna be really happy I did this. Let's make this one into a rounded peak. Let's see. You'll be surprised how few pieces you need. All right, one or two. Always better to have a couple extra so that when your hands are all gluey, you do not need to cut anymore. All right, once again, I'll move my vase because I've already drawn it and I can see the color now. I've got my glue in front of me. I said we would use a marker this time with my orange one. I didn't, let me grab that again and show you. Here we go, take it off the board. I did not draw, you can see pencil under there, but I did not draw with a marker. I want to show you different ways of doing things. So we'll use a marker for definition. We will use scissors for a more structured look. All right, here we go. This is it, marker. I chose a blue marker and I'm just going to do a round. This you might wanna take your time with. When you have the marker, it also gives you better guidelines. And let's see how sturdy my hand is. Not too bad. And the good thing about the permanent markers is once they're on the paper, they're on the paper. You don't get it all over your baby fingers. And down. And down. Notice I'm going towards myself. Pulling towards yourself when you're drawing is a lot easier than going away from yourself because your hand actually blocks where you're going and around the bottom. I chose something fairly simple, both for you and for me. Sometimes I have these great ideas and then I complicate things. Let's just do this, just so I have an idea. And if you look closely, you can see that I put little marks where the light shines. Those I am not gonna put dark colors on. You're ready for the process?
let's start out with the lightest color. So I'm going to start out with my light blue. Move my others off to the side. Stir this up one more time. Oh, do not forget to have one of these, very handy. You want to dip it in the glue, but you wanna also get the excess or extra glue off, and then I'm gonna paint. Paint it on. The hardest part might be the actual drawing itself. Now I'm gonna put this on my tray so it doesn't get sticky. These tend to stick together. If they do, that's fine because then you're gonna get a double deeper layer. I'm going to be looking at this. Now once it's down, that's the exact same shape, I don't want that. I'm making sure I do not cover up. How many times has Miss Linda said, once you get to this point, it's like putting a puzzle together? Kind of shows you the mindset. Now I'm going to brush this gently over the top. If you do it a little rough and it bends up, that's okay, just cover it again. Can you see the two different tones here? I've got a darker one where it overlapped. Let's take a long one for the neck. The top of a vase is called the neck. And what I think I'm gonna do right away, dip again, dip, swish, and get the excess, the extra off. Here we go. I'm gonna put some white in to remind myself where the, in fact, these are long, so I can actually, I'll rip these with my fingers. You're gonna see how different this looks from, now there's a light there, a light there, a light there. You can actually touch it and use your paintbrush as a tool as well. I'm gonna put white there to remind myself not to put dark over. Sometimes you need to put little clues in and you're not gonna be able to see the white, but I will be able to see it. Swish, dunk, dip. This one you can dunk. Sometimes I say don't dunk. I need a triangle. Let's take this white and cut it. Keep your scissors handy. You never know, you never know when you're gonna need them. So I've got two of these on there, so I'm going to have to really put a little heavier coat of glue and water mixture. Pick this one up. I think this one needs to go that way. All right, one more down the side. You can always go over white. All right, now I'm set, starting to get it together. Smaller pieces, and I've rounded a lot of these edges. And the bottom of a vase is also a little deeper because not as much light gets to it. I'm almost done with my light blues. I think I need to put one up here. Now, even though this is straight, that part of the vase is straight. Do you see how little glue and water you need? And you need to pat it like you're petting a little tiny baby mouse or something. If you're rough with it, it's going to disappoint you. I think I'll put one more light right here and then we'll move on. I do use my paintbrush a lot as a guide. It saves you time. We're already getting this really cool colors coming together. So let's put, I've got my dark and my medium blues. Work from the lightest color and work your way up. I'm going to go for the bottom right now. And I'm actually gonna put enough glue to where I can just, wow, talk about a good fit. That was lucky. We like lucky. Now this one must be where I cut it off. I'm going to put it over the top this way to create a different shape. Again, use your paintbrush as a guide. Plus I knew it was gonna be the right size. See what's happening? I'm getting that deepness. So I don't forget, I'm going to put this, which is too big, put my paintbrush down. I'm gonna cut this in half and I'm gonna use both of them, but I'm going to, you always need to put a coat, even if you're going over another one. Put it here and then pick this, whoop, whoop, maybe not. Mm, I need to cut this off, otherwise it'll go over. This is what I meant about having a little paper towel or something. Now watch, this little edge will wanna go over. I can actually take my paintbrush and push it and fold it. Look at that. Now you can see the depth already, the deepness of the bottom. I'm going to take another light blue. 
I covered it up. And this is a little dark right up here. To counteract that or to take it out of there like that, I'm going to put one of these on the top to lighten it. Remember when you put the light over the dark? There, now it's not so deep. This is a section I wanted to have deep. So let's see. I like when the pieces don't fit perfectly. You can cut them perfectly, but when you have something like this, and then, and see how I push that up? You're gonna get a little bend right there, but it's gonna give a little bit of, and if it goes over, don't worry. This is art, this is like constructive, what do you want to call it? I would call it abstract. And it's also a method of collage if you think about it. Hmm, so I need to get some darkness in the center here. I believe that I'm gonna to have to cut these. I thought that they would be thin enough, but since this is so narrow, I'm gonna cut, and I'm cutting two at a time. Remember in our scissors lesson, when you cut two at a time, you get what? Two, four, one. All right. There we go. And you'd think that the rounded part would go on the edge because it's a cylinder, but no. Uh, let's pick up another one. Pull it down here. We are almost there. Now I've kept my white, so I know. Should I continue it with the dark? Yes, just a small piece, right? I'll, I'll snip it off. Use my paintbrush as a tool. Now it's connected. And maybe I'll just actually put that over because it seems not a straight line. I have an open space here. What I'm going to do again is I'm gonna pull it. Don't worry about pulling some of them. Use my paintbrush, put it down. Look at so far, isn't that gorgeous? It's just the littlest things you do make the biggest difference. And I see where I'm gonna put this little guy. Or maybe not since he didn't make it, or she, or it, or they. All right, top, lots of dark. Should I also, yeah, oh, that's a good idea. Maybe I'll go with a medium on that. These are all round though. I'm gonna have to do some cutting here for you. And this time I'm just doing one at a time. Little pieces can be used for other things. This I'm gonna check before I put on. Mm. How about right there? Since you have some of the glue and water mixture on there already, you can actually, ooh, it's, it's nice because it's, now it's giving a rounded look to it. Come to me. So I'm gonna continue that look. Look at that. And this little guy, come, come, up, up, aha. I'm gonna put this one this way to fill that space in so it doesn't look empty. Ooh, Miss Linda's loving this. Now, dark on the top, and we are almost good to go. You're gonna love doing this. You can do flowers like this. You can make greeting cards. You can make paintings to give to your grandmas and grandpas and teachers and all the people you love. Um, these are all too big now, so I need to get my scissors out. These are the dark ones. It's Difficult to tell sometimes the difference between a medium and a dark. These are smaller pieces, so that, come on scissors. Tissue paper is so thin that it's a little difficult to, let's see, we're gonna give this, and I'm glad I put my white down there so I don't cover up the light. It makes a big difference. This one should go this way because there was light right there too. Now see, before I even push it, I'm gonna push it over. Always be in charge of your paper, even when you don't think you are. Now this, I'm gonna take this because I need a little rounded one. Or maybe not, maybe let's just put this one in here. Let's see how this fits. <laughs> My brush is not wet enough. Up, there we go. So far, looks good. I think I need some dark in here just to pull it through. So let's get this medium one. He, at it attached. I don't know why I say he's and she's when it's an it. There we go. Round, you can see it's round. There's a back. I think I actually need to round that out. Hmm. One more. I think I'm just gonna do medium again. 
Or maybe I should go dark. I need to round this out. Miss Linda's too busy to get her scissors again. Again, the more you put on top of each other, the deeper the color, the more shape that you're going to get. There we go. Now I like that. It looks more realistic. So let's put this here. Now, since I have light in there, I need really thin, thin, thin pieces. I promise I'm almost done. I know you want to get to this. I, when I watch things and I learn, I'm like, oh, I just want to go get my paper and my pencil or my paints out or whatever it is and get to it. All right, I need to put some in between there because there's light in there. My hands did not get very dirty. When you rip, it seems like they get a little dirtier. All right, I did not lose my light. I'm going to put this one here. And you will find that as you're doing this, it'll be like, okay, stop. That's enough. That's enough. This looks too white. I'm going to put one in. There we go. A little bit over here, and we are finished. I need to cut. Definitely need to cut. I'm going to go with light blue. Going to cut some circles because this is circles. And just think, get your tissue paper out. And you can buy tissue paper almost anywhere. Um, the 99 cent stores and the dollar stores have them. That way you can practice and practice and practice. It takes a delicate touch. It takes imagination to see what it's going to turn out like after you're done. And I need one little spot over there. This one is calling to me. All right. There we go. Check it out. Put my tool down. Hold this up so you can see. Look at that beautiful, structured, abstract piece of art. Like I said, you can do it. This right here, I can see I have to fix this. It's dry. When you're doing these, you can... Like I said, do flowers, do vases, do anything you like. Do a tree, do, do a teddy bear, anything. This was just to try to show you how to get transparency and the difference in the color concept of one over the other, creating a new tone, a new color. Take your time, cut your paper before you start. It'll save you a lot of time. I hope you had a good time because I sure did. Well, I delivered what I promised. That was a really good way of learning how colors can change. Value of color really means a lot when you're doing a piece of artwork. When you're done, send it in to me at one of my social medias. And if you really love these classes, check out my website, artwithmisslinda.com. I will see you next class.